Hey guys, today's short video, we're gonna talk about servicing, repairing, rebuilding, and things to look out for on a PulsaJet carburetor found on a Briggs and Stratton flathead engine. Now, these are so simple to work on. We're gonna need a couple of screwdrivers. We also need a half inch spanner. A paintbrush, which is gonna be handy to get to those tight and hard to reach areas. I like to use a small little hand lens, and you can use a magnifying glass, or even just your zoom feature on your phone. And lastly, some brake cleaner, brake or carb cleaner, whichever you prefer. Carb cleaner can be a little bit strong on certain parts, so best to play it safe if you're unsure. First thing we're gonna do is take this manger out. That will come out, there'll be a little seal in there as well, and a spring. And just double check with these that the end of that needle is not damaged or deformed. Make sure that there's no problems there. The main way that those get damaged is when you unscrew the seat at which it sits in, you put this back inside that seat all the way in and then you tighten this down, it will overexert force on that tip there and you'll end up damaging it. So talking about that, we'll take this one off. And just again, double check that those threads aren't damaged or deformed. And then there'll be a little washer and that can go and be reused as well. Inside there, you actually have your main jet. Again, a flathead screwdriver. Just be very careful because it is brass. Unscrew this. And we'll do the same thing. We'll get under really good light, under a hand lens. And again, as you can see, it's really nice and clean. We'll flip the carburetor over and you'll have four screws, little flathead screws, and they're holding on the fuel pump diaphragm. There is no gasket on here. Let me peel this one away. Now this is, yeah, I mean, it's still somewhat soft, but it is actually deformed. So it's a good idea to replace them if in doubt. They're very cheap and uh, you can buy those either online or your local outdoor power equipment supplier. Then we have the little retainer and this just takes some of the pressure off of this spring. Otherwise it would start to cut into that diaphragm. These two tubes here will start to pick the fuel up. This longer tube pulls it from the tank. Okay, so as the vacuum is created by the downstroke of the piston with the intake valve opening, this diaphragm will come down and it'll actually cause a vacuum in this area beneath the diaphragm and this cover plate and it will suck up fuel from this tube all the way up into this little hole and it will go on top of this diaphragm and then inside that little chamber in there. So that's covered like that. And then what happens is as the piston comes back up and that valve, the intake valve closes, the spring behind this diaphragm pushes it back up. What that will do is the fuel that's now sitting in this little chamber is going to get squeezed and pressed back through this hole, which is covered up by the diaphragm here. It's going to release it and it's gonna go into this drilling here. And then that drilling actually opens up here inside the carburetor and it will fall into another little chamber inside your fuel tank. This acts as almost like your float bowl and then that's gonna get sucked up and that's gonna get metered by your main jet, that little brass one here where the needle sits in and then it's gonna go back through, through the intake and then you're gonna have that whole cycle completing. This pump is constantly going and it's gonna constantly keep sucking up fuel and putting it into this bowl and what it can do, there's actually a little notch in the bowl and that fuel can actually then flow back down again. So it's this continuing cycle of vacuum, pulling on the diaphragm, fuel coming up through, down, into the bowl, out here. Venturi effect is pulling it up this tube through the carburetor and into your engine. That's how it works, it's really simple. But we have to test a couple of little things here. These two plastic kind of uptake straws, uptake tubes, are actually held in place with a, an adhesive. And if that adhesive starts to wear and there gets air leaks in here, you're actually gonna to start to suck air. So let's now test the two drillings and these two tubes and we'll see how they are. So firstly, what we'll do is pop the main jet back in and the needle holder goes back in next. And then we want to put the needle back in and we want to seat it all the way down. Only lightly, don't go really hard on it because you'll damage the end of that needle. I'm gonna gently blow through and I'm gonna place some soapy water all around that little seal that you can see there. And I'm just gonna double check and see if any bubbles come out. I've given it a good hard blow and I can tell there's absolutely no bubbles coming out of the same paintbrush. Some goes over that drilling. I'm now gonna gently blow on the end. You can clean that more if you like. And it's not making any bubbles whatsoever. It's a really quick test 
and it will tell you straight away whether you've got any leaking. You don't need any specialized tools like a pressure and vacuum tester. And we can now move on to the next stage, which is actually going to be cleaning these two, the little fine mesh filters. We're going to clean these filters out, and we're also going to clean out the drillings that are in this carburetor. Just a quick heads up while I'm taking this apart again, this will not seal, this jet will not seal, or I should say this needle, will not seal that little drilling in there fully. So when you're blowing through the smaller tube, expect to lose a little bit of air there. So the holes that we need to clean, and we're going to use some brake cleaner in this case, we've got one here, one here. This hole should squirt out from under here. This hole is going to squirt out that tube and it's going to clean all that dirt that it's picked up. We need to clean the second tube and that way we can either, if possible, squirt some fluid into that hole, but better yet is just to go and spray through that mesh and clean that off there. We then have two extra holes inside. We're going to clean those two out as well. And then of course we'll just go over the rest of the carburetor and make sure it's nice and clean before reassembly. We have the cover plate which has two big holes. They don't tend to get blocked but we're going to clean those as well. Then we have the main jet which needs to be cleaned. And then we just need to double check that that needle again is nice and clean, not deformed and the threads aren't damaged as well. And the same, the threads aren't damaged on there. So I'm going to do that now and I'll bring you right back. So all the passages have been cleaned out now and uh, it's time for reassembly. It's so quick and so easy. The only thing I'm going to put in is a new fuel pump diaphragm. The gasket here is great. The gasket that connects to the cylinder head is great as well. There's no need to change anything. This seal is good as well, this little washer. So we're going to leave it well alone. All we have to do is place the spring back in on the fuel pump. This little keeper. Again, these come in the kit. So if you buy the whole complete kit, you can just replace those if you so wish. Fuel pump diaphragm can only go on one way. It's back in like so. Cover goes back on. I've got little alignment pins. The four screws go back in place. Main jet is clean. That's going to go back in. We just want to go snug. Your needles will clean, you've inspected that, there's nothing wrong with it. That goes back in. Screw it down till it's lightly seated. And now turn it out one and a half turns. That's one and a half. That is your starting position on one of these carburetors. Really important here, I mentioned that you can go and clean this out with compressed air and carburetor cleaner and brake clean, you won't have any issues. This video up here is giving you a carburetor that you should never use any of those three on. I hope that video helps. I hope today's video helps. Until next time, I'll catch you soon.